Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Michiel Klerk, and we are talking about his book, Dream Guidance, Connecting to the Soul Through Dream Incubation. What an, what a, I love the word incubation because that's such a big word here in Seattle where I'm from because of the high tech world. Um, so welcome. Thank you, CJ. It's a pleasure to be with you. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. So I, um, just for this show, I had a fabulous dream. It was almost as if I was preparing and I had just talked to a client yesterday. I'm a coach. I was just talking to a client and we were interpreting her dream. So I'm really, really excited about, and I've been thinking about dreams a lot. So um, I want to first start off because I know that you're a Jungian therapist and, and that you also um, founded this this um young what is it called the young foundation i think it's yeah the young platform platform yeah so so tell me um about young and what he said about the conscious subconscious super conscious and where dreams fall within that realm yeah so uh young is um uh... In, uh, uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, it's at uh, the same time as Freud. And at that time in, uh, in Europe, they were exploring the psyche. And uh, Freud discovered or uh, came up with this notion that there is an unconscious, so that there is a part that we know about and a part that we don't know about. And that actually that part that we don't know about is driving our life in a, in a pretty foundational and profound way. Jung added to that, uh, that the part of the unconscious, that there is a personal unconscious and a collective unconscious. Hmm. But a certain way he thought that we as humanity are actually connected to each other and actually even further to nature uh, and to everything in itself by, a, by a, <clears throat> a level of consciousness that he calls the collective unconscious. Hmm. That is then uh, populated also by all kinds of beings, dream beings or uh, the diamond or the spirit guide or ancestors or whatever else uh, is being imagined to live in the, uh, in, in the other world. And he thought that uh, dreams were uh, one manifestation of this uh, personal and collective unconscious that, that we, uh, where we entered into that world at night and uh, uh, where we would have a whole set of experiences. So dreams would portray um, all kinds of things from where we are, where we are about to go, and also a place where we could actually engage with these dream beings. Mm. And and how, so there's, um, I always get tripped up, there's the unconscious, and then there's the subconscious, and then I think there was the idea of a super conscious. So in the dream, and you talked about the difference between the individual and collective unconscious. So where does subconscious is that the same as unconscious and where does that fit yeah there's in the, you're, you're right there's all these different terms that actually point to some form of 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 what the unconscious that part of us that we're just not conscious about mm. uh jung called it more the the personal and the collective unconscious mm -hmm. uh, other people call it the subconscious um sub uh, it's 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 an it's an it's a layer of consciousness that lies outside the sphere of our consciousness, but the, but then the, the other the other thought about it is that the unconscious itself is not unconscious. We are unconscious of it, but mm. the unconscious itself is a whole field that is pretty conscious of itself. Yeah, so you could use this unconscious or subconscious kind of interchangeably is what I'm understanding it to be. Right. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's talk about how dreams fit within that whole model. So dreams then are, you said are, there are different types of dreams. And so um, when I think about my own categorization of dreams, there seem to be good dreams, which I go to sleep and I wake up and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, can I, Oh, I wish I hadn't woke up because I want that dream to continue. I want that answer that I was just waiting for in the dream and I never got. Um, they're bad dreams or nightmares. Um, and then there are what you called um, spontaneous guiding dreams and which feel to me like almost um, information downloaded from what you're describing as the collective unconscious, like messages that are meant for my personal development. 
And frankly, sometimes I just don't remember as hard as I try to remember. I just don't remember them at all. So tell us about um, those types of dreams. Like how, how am I to interpret good dreams, bad dreams, this spontaneous guiding dreams? Yes. Uh, another great question. I think that uh, all dreams come in service of uh, helping us become us. Mm. So our own soul tries to become itself, just like the rose seed wants to become a rose and the acorn wants to become an acorn, uh, an oak. Uh, our soul comes into the world with certain qualities and talents and, and wounds probably, and uh, uh, it wants to realize itself. Now, this realization of its own nature is what, uh, what life and also dream life is trying to achieve. Mm. So some dreams are, uh, are, are being experienced by us as more enjoyable, but also the negative of the, the nightmare dreams uh, are not necessarily only negative. If we would uh, learn to see that the nightmare very often is an anxiety dream, Nightmares are just big anxiety dreams in, mm. uh, usually, and that they are trying to communicate something to us that actually is important for us to, uh, mm. to know. Mm. We have usually too much anxiety, sometimes not enough anxiety about a certain situation, and the dream just tries to awaken us to that reality. And if we pick up that message, the, the nightmare will go away and we will feel uh, peaceful again. Mm. So it's a soul trying to communicate to us something. Right. Um, I, I, um, I, I'll just share with you something that was, I said, I've been thinking about dreams for the last couple of weeks. And I, I was listening to Reggie Ray, who's another um, author and speaker from um, the Sounds True, like yourself. And he um, was saying that um, nightmares are really, um, I think in your parlance would be like the soul speaking through you to um, process negative karma. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. There, there are things that have, he was explaining that the body wants to, for us to experience what it's feeling and needing. And it, that's its job. And if we don't spend the requisite time during the day to tune into the messages of our body, then our body will just start processing this through our dreams, which I thought was fascinating. I just wanted you to comment on that too, since you've, you've, you're clearly more of an expert in this area than me. Well, it, it, indeed, it's in the, in the same line. If the, the dream would respond if, uh, to day-to-day -day experiences or stored karma, or if the body is on its uh, uh, getting the wrong food or the wrong, of, of, of sometimes even a dream, uh, if we would have uh, some, some uh, illness, then uh, we might have uh, a, a very scary dream about something is rotting inside our house or a, a burglar tries to climb into the house. And then uh, um, yeah, that in that case, it might be the body that's saying, oh, be careful, something is, is, is going really wrong. Please pay attention to this. So it's really nightmares are really pay attention to something kind of a dream. But yeah. because we're scared of it, we try to push it away. But that makes, let's say, the monster that is chasing us makes that monster only uh, more dark. Mm -hmm. If we could uh, even just write down the dream and maybe make a drawing of the monster and say, monster, I find you very scary. Uh, yet, uh, do you have a message for me? Do you want to mm -hmm. tell me something? Mm -hmm. And then even start listening in this reality, what, what comes back. Or like I described in dream guidance, you can ask your dream the question and you return back to it and you say, monster, show me tonight what you want me to know. Mm. And then uh, uh, you can get aligned with what it wants to say. And most of the time, almost always, it, it will be in your own benefit to do that. So I had a dream yesterday that I think you would categorize as a spontaneous guiding dream where it was a very... I've been contemplating and it, and it kind of follows your model, although I don't, I wasn't consciously asking a question and, and we'll go into your model um, it, hopefully um, in the near future. But one of the things that was interesting is um, I've been doing a lot of presentations to groups and um, as your soul awakens and opens, it starts picking up the collective energy, the collective unconscious. And I'm in the part of my journey where 
sometimes I feel the collective unconscious so much that I can't, like, I'm not even sure where I am and where I began and end in this particular scenario. And um, I think I've been contemplating because sometimes I pick up so much energy from groups that I work with that it, it actually drags me down. Like I'll actually, it will take me down. I'll be sad or sometimes I'll be crying and I'm not, nothing in my life is really crying. Right. Yeah. worthy of crying, frankly, but I'm working with groups who are really sad and I'll just start crying. And mm. I don't, it's like, it's, it's very, the division is, is very unclear. And so I've been, I've been contemplating that a lot. Like, what is that? How do I not have to, how can I be one with this collective unconscious, which has beautiful messages for my soul's evolution. And at the same time, not be um, subjected to the, um, get stuck in the pain and the mm -hmm. misery of it all. Mm -hmm. So that was what I was contemplating. It must have been last night because I woke up this morning and it was the weirdest thing. I just had these recurring messages where someone's like, listen, what you place your awareness on is what you're aware of. So if you're focusing on that group and the pain and the misery of that group, that is what you're going to be most aware of. If you focus on the awareness of presence during that moment, that is what you're going to be aware of. So it's really about your awareness and where you place attention and you have mm. a choice to do that. And I was like, mm. wow, thank you, dream. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but it was like, this was repeating yes. over and over and over again. So this time I woke up and remembered, but oftentimes I, I literally, I try really hard, but I can't remember. So what does one do with those kind of spontaneous dreams? Well, I, uh, I encourage people to write it down because dreams have a tendency to evaporate. Yeah. And, and, and this sounds like a really uh, helpful, profound dream uh, for where you are in, uh, in, in, in being a, a coach and working with groups. And there's, there's a lot to unpack in that dream. And I think it's a great skill. I'm, I'm a therapist uh, part-time as well. And so how do we deal with sitting in the field of other people's emotions, uh, having the ability to sense into it so that we have the information on what goes on in the, in the room, and yet how do we not uh, live there? And I think your dream very beautifully shows in your case, it is uh, by shifting your awareness. You can experience it, so you know what goes on. That allows you to be really empathically attuned to the group. And then how do you get, I almost see it as a sponge. You become the sponge, you have that. And how do you, how do you get it out of you again? And your dream says, by shifting your awareness. So you just tell me have to focus on something else. And that will help you to uh, let the energy go out of you again. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it's, that is a, it's a phenomenal a therapeutic skill that you just discover there or get handed to you in the dream. And I think it's a beautiful example of a spontaneous, helpful dream. Sure, you've been working on it, and that, is, that often happens. Right. It became kind of spontaneous to you. And it shows how uh, there are many ways that we can grow. But uh, dreams is just one great way where we can get the information that's helpful for our life journey. No. But what, what, what does one do when you actually have a dream? I've had many more dreams where I don't yeah. remember it. And it's like, it goes that quickly that I almost can't even, I wake up and at the moment of waking up, I don't remember anything. Do you think that there's sometimes dreams where you're not supposed to remember, you're not supposed to remember anything. It's just a download for your subconscious to, or unconscious to gnaw on and figure out by itself. Like don't get your brain and conscious mind trying to analyze the, the dick, you know, that, that analyze the minutia of all this, just we're going to download the spontaneous guiding direction and you're not going to remember it. And sorry, <laughs> is, there, is there some you think yeah. that fall under that category? It, it, it could very well be. And then very often uh, uh, during the day, you might have an intuition or, you know, this is the old saying, sleep on it. And then the next day you have a different perspective. So maybe you just wake up with a different perspective. 
Yet the key uh, way of, uh, of establishing uh, this dream recall is having a pen and paper next to your bed and, and write down immediately up after you wake up uh, what you've dreamt. And uh, the more you do that, the more you get in a habit and maybe from two dreams a week, you go to three or four. I don't remember my dreams every night either. But, uh, uh, but I also know that if I write them down, I get more dreams and better dreams and more helpful dreams. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do that, it's almost like uh, the unconscious mirrors a little bit our in interest and, and relationship. We're interested. It, it steps closer. We're a little bit less interested. It goes a little mm -hmm. further. Not in a punishing way, but just more like you throw a ball in the air and it comes down. That's not just a right. It's just what it is. And... Uh, because at night, your short-term memory goes offline. Mm. That is why you don't remember your dreams. Mm -hmm. and it just comes back uh, online when you wake up. Mm. With people that want to improve their dream recall, even if you don't know it, but you dreamt, maybe you write down, oh, I feel this, uh, this knot in my stomach. Mm. Oh, I feel a bit uh, strangely anxious. Mm. And you just write, write that down. Mm. And that will, will trigger dream recall and they have maybe two, three, four dreams a week, which is plenty to work with. And um, it gives a great way of seeing where you are and where you're heading in your life. And then uh, people can just add it to their daily activities. Okay, so here's my challenging question, because I, I, I honestly don't know the answer to this question. And I, I'm beginning to contemplate this. And maybe I'll find out my dream, because I am really curious about this question. But... You know, you know, that the Taoist view is just like, don't try to figure out everything. Don't try to make meaning out of everything. Yeah. You know, the unconscious is coming and, and evolving you from the inside out and just allow it without trying to get involved. You know, it's, it's almost like there's this beautiful symphony that's happening around me. And I'm like, Hey, what are you guys saying? I want to write it down. <laughs> it's like, step out, CJ. <laughs> Well, you know, don't get involved here. There's something beautiful that's happening and you and your little conscious mind writing all the things and making meaning out of it, you know, just step out, you know, don't, don't try to like dive into this and figure out something, which is completely my inclination. So I don't know what to make out of this tension between diving in and making meaning, which is psychotherapy is so great at, right? Making meaning, understanding, trying to... And, and, and also like letting go, like not trying to make meaning out of it. How have you danced this dance between these two opposites? Well, it's, a, it's in general a, a, a great question and a great art to how can you be in alignment with the Tao? Yeah. And uh, 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 one way of being with dreams is to translate it uh, into a meaning. Mm -hmm. Another is just uh, even uh, by writing down a dream, just uh, write it down and let the energy of the dream be present. So there's mm. different ways of being with the dream. And what that then actually does, it, it grinds this reality of this state of consciousness and it grinds it open a little bit to a different state of consciousness to flow in. So I think that in general, it allows to uh, have the Tao mm. be more fluid mm. and uh, uh, maybe there was a dream crocodile and instead of thinking, gosh, that uh, looks like uh, that aggressive boss of mine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just let the dream crocodile, uh, maybe you, him, you, you see it back uh, in the day and you let it walk with you throughout the day. And maybe you walk with it into the office of your boss and you go together. So you don't, you don't interpret it all, but you find an, a more harmonious being together. Because if you completely say, oh, I don't want that, that is, that is also more the opposite. But how can you allow these states of consciousness just to, just to come in? Yeah, I like that idea. So, you know, in a lot of um, tantric practices, it's about um, how can you be, how can you turn towards what is being brought forth in your awareness? So the crocodile is being, 
brought forth in your awareness. And I can just like read all the spirit animals about crocodiles and like understand that, you know, and it's like, mm, you know, which right, is my right, tendency right. to you know, like reel it in and understand it more and like read everything about it on the internet. Or I can go, wow, curious crocodile has, I love that idea of like crocodile has come up in my life to be aware of. Yeah. What am I to be aware of? I'm not sure, but let's go into the mystery of how it unfolds into something really interesting instead of, I think it's, it's less about, it's more about like certain types of minds like mine want to like dive into everything. But I like the idea of just, you know, subtly like, wow, this has brought, been brought into my awareness. Yeah. How can I just let it be without analyzing I'm the, an analytical the, like, type. I, I, I hear that, but I think also all most of our minds go to what does this mean and yeah, and somewhat how can I use this? But that that uh, that that that's a bit. If you can change more to a question as uh, who is visiting, a crocodile is visiting, and this is a dream crocodile who lives in the world of dream. So that's mm. we don't know if it has any relevance to any crocodiles in this reality. This dream crocodile shows up and now I'm showing curiosity for it. Mm -hmm. And I loved when you said uh, something as uh, uh, I'm just going to let it, uh, let it be and reveal and, and oh, now, now I'm going to have a relationship with crocodile. And uh, that's based on, uh, I don't know who this is. And that is it. And, and I let that there. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at the spirit animal and or thinking it's my boss or <laughs> yeah, like I put it in a cage, dissect it, look at all its innards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is my tendency to do. <laughs> all right, I also love the other thing that you talked about in your book called the daemon. Is that daemon? Yeah. That, tell me it's, what it's, that is. Yeah, it's a it's a Greek uh, word, the daemon. Diamond. The daemon was uh, uh, almost any culture around the world has this uh, this idea that uh, at birth. Uh, we come into the world with a uh, figure that uh, helps and support. So it's in the Greek uh, tradition, it's the daimon, that it was both the representation of a talent, but also as a guide. Mm. In uh, the Roman tradition, it's called the genius. Mm. So everyone, everyone was thought to have a genius or have multiple genie. And it's, it's a big uh, uh, difference mm. to have a genie versus being a genius. So people aren't a genius, where often these days people with a high IQ or exceptional skill are being uh, allocated to. It's but we all have a genie or a genius. And some genius or diamond likes to cook and another likes to make a radio show and another uh, can uh, uh, do yard work or make cars or whatever. And we all have one or multiple of them. And we can, we can find a relationship to them. And they come uh, both as a talent, as, as a guide that helps us for the realization of who we are. Mm. And so these diamonds, they come at night. So, is it, so this is how this interacts with our dreams, right? So you have a, tell me how, what the relationship to, between the diamond and this genius and this part of us trying to cultivate the true, it sounds like the true destiny of our soul. Um, right. What is it? What's its purpose? Like it, if I were to like write out a corporate roles and responsibility, <laughs> what is the purpose of the, the diamond? The, the diamond uh, awakens you to your calling in life. Mm. And at the same time is, uh, is, your, ch is, is your talent. Mm. So a person who has a basketball uh, diamond, the diamond uh, would uh, very early on uh, start pointing out on TV that basketball is on and you would be fascinated. And it wants to play uh, basketball. And, uh, and when you do that, you and your diamond start merging. Yeah. And uh, when you and your diamond merge, you get into a different state of consciousness. Usually mm. people call it the flow state. Mm. And, uh, uh, and, and then your, uh, the, the old word for of a way of thinking about happiness in the Greek tradition was eudaimonia. When you and your diamond are seen together, that would be happiness. So it would not be how much money do you have or uh, how successful are you, but actually are you with your spirit, your innate soul together 
And when you are seen together with your soul or your spirit or your diamond, then you flourish, then you are happy. Mm. That is the real purpose of life. And as a derivative of that, we feel meaning or we have meaning. Mm. But it's actually even more important that we play basketball or that we cook or that we do whatever our diamond is. Then, uh, uh, because then you have the experience of being fully alive. Mm. That's what we're really after. Okay, I'm so excited because what I got, <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Okay, here's my spiritual nerding out on this. Yeah. Is that in, um, you know, we all talk about evolution and the idea that um, we're evolving and like we're reaching to, we're like reaching to find this. What is my soul's purpose? I think deep down, every single person is, is intended to find their diamond, right? I mean, whether we listen or not, whether we listen to our dreams, whether we do anything with it, that's a completely different matter. But we're always like reaching, you know, we're reaching for this thing. And then um, at the same time, this thing is coming into us and trying to have, um, an, uh, there's this great teacher, Richard Rudd, that talks about an involution, right? This idea, it's, and it's a Buddhist mm -hmm. idea where the in the Buddhist idea, there's a hierarchy or a bunch of these enlightened gurus that you are associated with. You have a sangha that is coming down and it is coming down into you saying it's the diamond, right? It's the hello, wake up. <laughs> you can, we were telling, we're trying to tell you something, but it's like, it's, it's going inside. And it's what I'm hearing you say is like that diamond is coming in. And to the extent that I oh, I can listen to it and merge with it and become one with it. Then there's this, what some models call an involution where I'm actually moving. Like, it's like, this is coming down while this is coming up. And it's just like this virtuous kind of beautiful circle that is happening in and out, in and out. And so I yeah. love that idea that perhaps, I mean, I'm just merging. I'm a synthesizer, like all of this. Um, stuff from the hierarchy, my diamonds are coming in and saying like, hello, this is your talent. Please go out and get it. I'm awakening you with these dreams, these spontaneous guidance dreams that I don't really even remember, but we're talking to you. And if you're open to listen to us, we will download a whole bunch of files in the CJ operating system and they'll just like be operating without my common under like my my conscious understanding of what's happening but I'll be being led from inside to manifest outside yes and yeah. uh, and there's there's a lot of uh, in what and how you how you talk about there's so so much to think about because uh, uh, what if the diamond is already uh, present? then uh, it is not so much about uh, uh, we develop a talent, but the talent is already uh, full-blown here. We, meet, we need to open ourselves up and get our body in a certain way that the talent can flow through us. Mm, and, uh, yeah, that's brilliant. It's a seed. It's already in there. It's, it's just not. aligning with it. Yeah. Aligning. And so I see so in some ways, this incubation process. Oh, I understand incubation now. I get it now. I didn't understand it. I get it. Sorry for being dense, but it's a seed that's being planted inside of me. And how do I incubate it? Like, how do I water and give it sun and give it light and walk with my alligator or analyze my alligator if it should be that way? You know, I don't really know, but how can I take this daemon that is taking this beautiful advice from some higher level down into me and incubate it right it. and and uh, and dreams is just one great way because it's the natural habitat of the diamond mm. however uh people can get there through meditation just listening to their own heart their soul uh the diamond also is active is present right now and, and uh, will cause uh, a person that is getting off their path maybe to get depressed. You know, you're in the wrong job or on the uh. wrong relationship. And instead of thinking in that moment about depression as a disorder, as something that should not be, and then you just do need to get rid of it or medicate it to numb it, what, what if that is the diamond telling you, hey, be careful, you're, you're walking in the wrong direction. Uh. I need to slow you down. I take energy away because... 
if you go too far that direction, that's not good for you and your and, and your soul. Right. And so if you would change direction, get out of the relationship, not that that's so easy or dare to jump from one job to the next, then uh, then then you will often see that the depression goes away. It's not a hundred percent rule, and there's definitely sometimes that people have have a real uh, uh, brain uh, problem, but very often disturbances in life are other ways of the diamond calling you to awaken you. Mm-hmm. So there's anxiety or depression or sometimes a physical symptom. It's more like, hey, yeah. Wait. Wake up, listen, listen. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, as you were recalling the different types of things. I've literally had one time when I've woken up and thought, I need to take B12, which is a certain vitamin here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the heck is this supposed to mean? <laughs> and then I went to my nutritionist, I'm like, can you test to see if they said, oh, yeah, you do need B12. And I thought, what the, <laughs> what the heck? Like, this is just the weirdest thing. But if you're open and you are open to receiving information. You don't discount it. I mean, it, it's there for your well-being. Um, and I love the idea of, the, of you know, it, maybe you have a nightmare where the crocodile <laughs> rips your head off and it's a bloody mm-hmm. mess. And it's trying to tell you, like, you're in danger, you know, or, you know, yeah. who knows. But if yeah. you're just like, that was such a weird dream, whatever, you know, go for the rest of your day there's something that is trying to tell you there's this diamond that is trying to tell you something for your soul's evolution and whether you decide to listen to it or not is up to you, but it, it's up to you. But what you did so well is that uh, you postponed uh, uh, when you got that B12 uh, uh, message, you postponed like, Oh, that is uh, nonsense. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but uh, uh, just because I have the experience that I need to take B12. Let me take my own experience really uh, radically serious and check it out. Yeah. And if, if it's not, okay. But if, it, but like in your case, hey, it is. And yeah. so many people have, have, have come to the conclusion that, hey, if I listen to my own intuition, if I listen to my, to my dreams and I take them serious, actually they're, they're full of really helpful guidance. Uh, and sure, I don't get it always, but... Uh, and I walk into the wrong direction, but even then, then they come and they say, hey, come back. But uh, the, the, the key thing you did and what is so important is you took your own experience serious yeah. and, and did something with it. And that's beautiful. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, mean, it's, it's, I think it's going back to what you said, which is, you know, you can you can ignore. And then it's like, well, you know, there's like I'm like turning into like a. I know it's old fashioned radio station. Probably people, young people are like, what is a radio station? But, you know, you're tuning into listening. So if you yeah. are, if you're listening and tuning in to what is being told and reacting, saying, oh, I'm going to take B12 or like yourself, you're writing down the notes, you know, after each time and three out of four times you get, you know, you get messages, but the fourth time you don't, and it's like, okay, but I'm tuning in, I'm listening. So you know, bring it on. But if you're not listening, then it's kind of like, well, I'm just going to turn them on the volume. Why bother? <laughs> I'm sure it's still giving you something, but I'm assuming that when you listen more, you're given more. Is that, am yeah. I just making something up? Or no, do you think that's no, true? no. The, what um, uh, the Nascapi Indians were a tribe that lived in North America and were nomads. And they uh, depended really on their dreams and intuitions on where to hunt and where to stay the night. Mm-hmm. What they figured out is that uh, when they started listening to their dreams, paid attention, followed up on it, uh, thanked the dream, uh, that they would get more dreams and better dreams on, on helping them guide through life. Mm. So, yeah, you're, uh, you're, you're right that uh, there is a relational aspect that uh, uh, plays out in dreams, but I think in intuition and with your own soul. And I don't think in terms of good or bad or that they're angry or so, but it's more you pay attention, you, 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 we get, if we pay attention, we get better dreams. We pay less attention, we get fewer interesting dreams. Hmm. That's um, very interesting. It's relational. I mean, I think about my son, hmm. my college-age son, who I sometimes give advice to, and he's like, I don't want to hear it. 
So then I'm, I, I don't want to just keep on giving him advice because then it feels like, mm-hmm. like I'm lacking boundaries. So instead, I just give him advice and he's like, I don't want to hear it. And then I stop. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the same thing I'm hearing. It's like, OK, I'm just respecting your will. Like, you don't want to hear these messages. OK, like yeah. I just will turn the volume down. It's no, no offense. I still love my son yeah. just as much as I did before giving him messages. It's just like, well. I don't, I, don't, I, yeah. I, I, I love, I love that, uh, that, uh, that way, because in, uh, in, in my book, I once asked also, uh, uh, um, uh, to the dream, dream, what, what do you want the, the list, the, the readers to know about this technique? And then I did dream about a very uh, compassionate wise CEO of a company that uh, the company had a new compassionate wise CEO and the CEO was a phenomenal manager in uh, what it uh, appeared to be that if you uh, uh, wanted to figure it out on your own, totally fine. Even if it took you, it takes you three years. Mm-hmm. If you actually, however, wanted that, uh, support, great. Was delighted as well. Equally, was, was equal, but delighted. And we'll give you advice. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that seems to be playing out. But I hear yeah. that you are in your story too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's relational. I mean, I think that's your key yeah. insight, right? The key insight yeah. that you had is it's relational. So, I mean, because you respect and love the other person, when they say no, yeah. you're like, okay, man, that's fine. You know, I'm out of here. There's, there's, well, what you did there is you allowed free will in yeah. your son. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and you still love him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just exactly the same as I loved him before I was trying to give him advice but like out of love for him i don't want to torture him with all my unwanted advice because that feels abusive you know i mean it's like don't do that so i love that um so we've been talking to um we've been talking to mihil clerk about his book dream guidance connecting to the soul through dream incubation and i now know what the incubation part means so exciting Thank you so much. This was so interesting. 